Hallelujah. Okay, we'll take three quick readings. Turn to Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 11, and Galatians chapter 5. Matthew 5, Matthew 11, Galatians 5. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 5. Blessed are the meek. When the Bible talks about blessed, um, it's simply talking about God's empowerment coming upon you to prosper if you are meek. So blessed are the meek simply means heavenly empowered by God to prosper the meek. For they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth. Maybe not this particular earth as it is our Jaga Jaga earth, but the new earth that will come descend from heaven. Hallelujah. And Matthew chapter 11 verse 29. This is Jesus Christ speaking and encouraging the people. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Ah, there is no better person to learn from than our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. Those who learn from God will ultimately find rest for their souls. But if you don't want to take God's yoke upon you and you don't want to learn of him, so you know how it is. Life without Christ is full of crisis. Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is... You know, if you, if, you, if you did any level of English in school at all, you know that when they say fruit, we're not talking about plenty, right? And when they say is, it means that we're dealing with a singular verb, right? The fruit of the Spirit is. There is one fruit. There are not many fruits. There's one fruit, but of course with different characteristics. And that's why if you, if you have been listening, all this while we'll be dealing with the Bible or the, the, char the Christian characters, you will see that a lot of them overlap. Have you noticed that a lot of them overlap because it's actually a single fruit, well, of course, with different um, degrees. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering. We've looked at all of these kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. I'm sure by now some people are wondering, okay, it's like we have almost covered them all. Against such, there is no law. Hallelujah. Father, we, we have gathered again today to listen at your feet, to learn from you, to take off your yoke because it is easy, and to take on your burden because it is light. We ask, O oh Lord Jesus, that today, that you would help us to put off a, a, any part of our character that, is, that, that, that doesn't reflect you and to take on Christ and to be more like him as your word comes forth today we declare that we are not um, um, stubborn, we do not put ourselves above the word we, we, we will make whatever adjustment necessary to, to, to align with what your word says we declare oh Lord God that we are not only hearers but doers, we declare that that which we hear today will receive gladly will mix it with faith and we declare that it will work for us in the name of Jesus as you keep chiseling and chiseling and removing um, those parts that, 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 um, that you didn't plant in us. As you keep chiseling and modeling us to become more like Christ, Father, we surrender completely to that which you will do. This morning we ask, O Lord, that you add another layer upon us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. You know, for a while now, we have been on a very exciting journey. How many of you have liked the journey so far? Is there anybody that's, that's, that will say that um, be, between then and now, when we started this journey and now, some changes, uh, I've noticed some changes in my life. Anybody? You, have, you are dealing more with integrity. You are, you are more committed in what you do. Um, you, you are beginning to exercise a lot more restraint and self-control. That is the whole goal. Uh, like I always say here, that every time you go out, you meet a lot of people that call themselves Christians. But the Christianity is not in the, in the name or in the title. It's not even in bearing a Christian name. There are so many times you run into these people. What is your name? Apostle Paul. What is your name? His name is Cornelius. The Theophilius. They have all those kind of fantastic Christian names. But in your dealings with them, ah, you wonder, 
you wonder. We're at a time and age where if people tell you, no, me, I'm a Christian, no, your antenna should go up because it's about to swindle you blue and black. God forbid. Why? Because we, we, we believe that Christianity is in the exterior. No, Christianity is in the inner man of the heart. Hallelujah. And that's what we have been trying to furnish all this why. All this while we are trying to chisel and to remodel and to refashion that inner man of the heart to be more like Christ. The people that were first called Christians were not called Christians because they had Christian names. No, they were called Christians because they looked and behaved like Christ. Hallelujah. They looked and behaved like Christ. So today, we are, oh, this season, this series we are dealing with is with the hope that one day you too will begin to look like Christ. You too will begin to sound like Christ. So that when men look at us, not only should they see Christ or hear Christ in us or through us, but that they should be able to taste of the fruits of our character. If you, like I always ask, if you offer the fruit of your character to some people, will they eat it? Because a lot of us are bitter, never queen Christians. Cantacorous. Always ready to fight. Very feisty. If you give, look for their trouble, they are ready to give it to you. Hallelujah. But little by little by little, Christ is being formed in us. Hallelujah. Uh, today, we shall be bringing the 12th um, uh, installment in this series. We did 11th last week, right? 12th. Today, we're looking at the 12th installment, and we are looking at, can anyone guess? Meekness. Hallelujah. Okay, but today, we call it gentleness. So, our title for today is Christian Character 12. A column or a hyphen, whichever works, works for you. Gentleness. Gentleness. Meekness. Gentleness. Mean the same thing. Gentleness. Hallelujah. And as usual, a good place to begin is the place of definition. We always define before we start. And I always tell you the reason why we do that. Two reasons. One, so that there's no confusion. You know exactly what gentleness means. Um... Normally, we we'll give more than one, ex one, one um, definition so that you can pick the one that really suits you. But you have to know what gentleness is. We're not guessing or assuming. And the second reason why we define is so that you will know if you are a gentle person. Mm -hmm. Or you are on your way to becoming a gentle person. You are semi-gentle. There are people like that, semi-gentle. I think that's where I fall. I'm not completely a gentleman. If you meet me on the wrong day, you will begin to wonder, ah, is that our pastor? I remember something happened once. <laughs> I, I, was, I was driving my son to school. Then he was in RFA. And we were running late. I was in a hurry. And I drive like James Bond. And then this, um, is it VIO or road safety? I can't remember now. Many years ago, he now pulled me over. Ah, I was mad. And my anger was, you see, can't you see a child in the car? Don't you have a wristwatch? You should know that this person is... I, 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 was just, I went on and on. This man just looked at me. He didn't say a word. He allowed me to land. And after I have landed, you know what he said to me? Be a Christian. And guess what? That was our word for the year. I instantly knew that this was a family worship center person. Hi! And the guy recognized me. <laughs> he knew. Immediately he stopped me. He had known that, ah, this is our church person. And I just went at him. Ga, 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 ga. He let me land. And when I finished, he looked at me and said, be a Christian. Hey! Then he said, you can go, sir. Kai. <laughs> so, so you will know, when we define, you need to know, are you a kind, a gentle person? Or are you on your way to becoming gentle? You are semi-gentle or you are far from it? As we define this morning, you judge yourself. So what is gentleness? Gentleness is the quality of being kind, tender, and mild-mannered. A gentle person is kind, he's tender, and he's mild in his manner. Hallelujah. Gentleness is showing care and respect for others in the way that you act or speak. The things that come out of your mouth, the way you behave, will tell us if you're a gentle person or not. Um, I, I know some ladies will be hearing for their husbands now. Please hear for yourself. You're nudging him. You did hear, ba? You did, no, hear for yourself. Listen for yourself. Number three, gentleness is being free from harshness, sternness, or violence. A gentle person doesn't fight. He's not the one that at the drop of a hat, he will roll his sleeves and give it to you. No. 
He is, he, he is free from harshness, sternness, or violence. Uh, and biblically, gentleness is softness of manners, mildness of temper, sweetness of disposition, and meekness. Oh, I like that. Can I say it one more time? I just like the ring to it. Gentleness, biblically, is the softness of manners, the mildness of temper, the sweetness of disposition, and meekness. That is what gentleness means biblically. And a gentle person from all these definitions, a gentle person is what? Kind. You see, last week we did kindness. And if, as you listen to me today, you begin to see overlapping between kindness and gentility. Je a gentle person is kind. A gentle person is meek. A gentle person is tender. A gentle person is compassionate, has love in his heart. A gentle person is humane. And a gentle person is humble. You know the difference between being humane and being humble? They are not the same thing, you know? Hallelujah. A gentle person is sympathetic. A gentle person is lenient. A gentle person is non-violent. And we can go on and on and on and on and on. That is how you know a gentle person. So again, examine yourself. Am I gentle? Am I on my way to becoming gentle? Or am I very far from being gentle? You know, in today's um, fast-paced world like ours, where everybody is in a hurry, you know, we call it the jet age, Everything is pa, 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 pa. Everybody's in a hurry. We often forget to be gentle. <laughs> you are driving from here. You are late like me. I was driving to rush, take my son to school. Why didn't I just leave the house earlier? Then I wouldn't have to pour out my venom on that poor road safety man that was just doing his job. We forget to be gentle. And as a matter of fact, we have reached a place in today's world where um, we look at, we view gentility as um, a thing for softies. Uh, when you see a gentleman, ah, that one is a softy. So I see they do like uh, Sina, like Sina and wife, they control him. Uh, he's a gentleman, but you, he, he's, he's, he's a soft, he's a softy. We often make that misconception to think that gentleness simply means uh, weakness or passivity. A gentle person is perceived to be weak or passive. But nothing can be further from the truth because gentleness is actually great strength and self-control. That's what gentleness is great strength and self-control. Nothing can be further from the truth to think that a gentle person is weak or passive. As a matter of fact, gentleness, um, by some other person's definition, is power under control. This man can crush you with one hand, but he lets you, um, like that man, he could have made my day miserable, you know that, right? He could have insisted, dragged me to his office and keep my son in the car for another three, four hours. He will miss school that day. Shabi, you want to show me that you can talk, but he could have messed my day up that day. You know that? Once you have that uniform, you can mess anybody's day up. You know, he could have done that. He had all that authority and power, but he put it under control. He was the gentleman. I was the, what was, that? What was the word? <laughs> you understand? Power under control. That's what gentility is. Hallelujah. And gentleness is actually born out of um, a place of love. Most times you see people that are gentle, it's not because they, they don't know how to be the other way, but there's just too much of love in their spirit. And that's why those who lack gentility, if you find them, they are very prideful, easily angered, and very, very vengeful. Anytime you do anything to them, if they don't take revenge, they will not let you go. A gentle person never, ever, ever puts himself above others. He doesn't think that he's better than you. For a gentle person, there is no high me or low you. A gentle person sees everybody as a human being. That's why I would say one of the synonyms of gentility is what? Being humane. Hallelujah. He is humane. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And you know, some people will wonder, why should I do things gently? Why should I be gentle? As far as I get the job done, yes, especially in the worship team, you know somebody comes here and is trying to, to score the song and is not getting it very well, you get angry at them, you shout at them, you talk them down, you harass them and everything. The person eventually gets the song and you, you allow him to sing, but something has died inside of them. Something has been wounded inside of them. You know, those kind of things happen. Why, does, why should I be gentle provided I get the job done? No. 
Because gentility doesn't only um, get the job done efficiently, it also preserves very vital relationships. It maintains peace. It maintains loving and vital relationships. So that you can as well actually get the job done, but in the process of getting the job done, you have wrecked very useful relationships if you do not go about it with gentility. Do we understand that? It is, it, is, it is more important to us that it should be more important to you that um, you, you preserve your relationship with that person than to just achieve results. Results are good, but you're achieving results at what expense? So you have gotten the job done, but now you have lost a brother or you have lost a sister. Which one would you rather? Like we saw last week, that judge asked the farmer, would you rather have an enemy or a friend as your neighbor? Hallelujah. Ah, uh, we are going to be looking at some, some biblical characters because we need to draw examples from the scriptures so that you don't think that, uh, okay, who will be my model now for, for gentleness? There are plenty of them in scripture. But first, we must know that our God is a very, very gentle man. Ah! One of the finest scriptures in the Bible is when he says, I stand at the door and I'm knocking. Ah, uh -huh. this guy can pass through the wall. He can pass through the wall. He, he can just approach the door and the door will open of his own accord. Why would he knock? He's a gentleman. If you will not let him in, he will not bamboozle himself in. He's a gentleman. Stands at the door and knock. He makes the rain to fall both on the just and the unjust, both on the good and the wicked. Even the evil man gets rain. His crops grow. Ah, this God is a gentle God. Oh. He deals with us in, with gentility. And why does he do that? He's hoping that the goodness of his heart ultimately will cause us to repent. Because he doesn't crave for the death of anybody. He doesn't want the sinner to die in his sin. So his goodness or his kindness or his gentleness towards that person, hopefully down the road, will begin to cause them to have a second thought or a rethink, and then they repent. Do you understand that? Imagine with me for a second <laughs> that God is seated, seated in heaven. And in front of him, there is this large console. This console has all sorts of buttons. There is one he can press and thunder will come from heaven. There's another one for lightning. There's another one for earthquake. There's the one that you can press and it will just mess up your day completely. There's another you can press and then they'll, you'll, be, you'll, you'll be filled with a lot of disappointments. And despite how wicked and callous we are and we have always behaved, guess what? He still chooses to press the button of blessing. Ah! Thank God not believe in our God though. You just see fire will just come out and just <laughs> just press lightning bolt, pow, consume that one. But he doesn't do that. He chooses to press the blessing, the button of blessing. That's the one he chooses to press. He chooses. He will get cause rain and sun to come upon the wicked and the and the good. He he, he doesn't want any sinner to die in his sins. He will press the, blessing, the button of blessing. He will press the, the, the button of goodness. So that even though you have just behaved like a monster in the house, you go out and good things still happen to you. And that's why some people actually continue in their wars, in their sins, because they feel like, hey, it doesn't, there are no consequences. No, that is just the goodness or the gentility of God trying to guide you or guide you to repentance. Hallelujah. So we look at three Bible biblical characters. Well, of course, there will be Jesus. We'll take one from the Old Testament and also one from the New Testament. If you look at in the book of Matthew and um, the book of, of, of Matthew chapter 11 and Matthew chapter 12, go home and study that. You will see that Jesus was very gentle in the way he related to his disciples, especially Peter. Ah! <laughs> Peter was a character. They will ask the one that before they finish the question, he started answering. Too quick. Ah, I will never to fear quite. Me deny you. No, I say, calm down, Peter. No, I would rather die than deny you. Jesus Christ told him, look, before the cock crows three times, you will deny, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Very quick. Lord, if it is you, ask me to come. He said, come. And the guy, before thinking, started walking on water. <laughs> Very quick. 
Peter, that Peter, that same Peter, Jesus was kind to the man over and over and over again. Jesus was washing the feet of his disciples. Peter said, you will not wash my feet, oh. Jesus Christ looked at him and still in gentleness washed his feet. Come. He began to walk on water and he took his eyes off. Jesus would have said, you, you need to hear what? You took it. But no, quickly, he rescued him in gentleness. On and on and on. and When Peter denied him, went back to fishing. This was a man he had invested so much time and energy on. Backslid, went back to fishing. Jesus Christ still prayed for him and restored him with in gentleness. Hallelujah. Peter, that same Peter. Jesus also was, was, he didn't condemn, you know those two dis disciples now? You know their names? James and the sons of Thunder. They wanted to sit by his left hand and his right hand. He didn't condemn them. He didn't condemn them. He just only simply asked them, are you able to drink of the cup from which I will drink? He didn't condemn them. He was gentle. Ah, if it was some of us, he'll come, uh, sit down. You, this boy, I need to hear what. And you give them the lecture of their life. And as a matter of fact, if they were number three and number four in the hierarchy, you move them to the last so that they will learn the lesson. No, he responded to them with the heart of gentleness. He was gentle to the little children. These children wanted to come. And that's why in our church here, we don't drive children. After service, come and see them. All of them will run. They want to hug pastor. Some of them call pastor. They are friends. And I love them. Jesus Christ didn't chase them away. Even though others wanted, shoo, 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 shoo. The man is very important. No. He was gentle even with children. He was gentle with sinners. We see him go and eat in the houses of sinners. <laughs> Some people are even saying that, ah, if he knows who this man is, he will not even shake his hand. How much more go to his house? But Jesus didn't care. He was that gentle. He would eat with sinners. Jesus was gentle with Judas. You think he didn't know that the man was a thief? He knew. He knew that Judas was pilfering from the post. He knew. But he was still gentle towards. He knew that Judas would betray him. By the time the man had finished the money in the post and there was no more money to steal from, he sold Jesus. Oh, you have not seen it that way before? That's the way you should read your scriptures. When the money had finished, he had stolen the money dry. He sold Jesus. He needed more money. But Jesus was still gentle in his dealing with Peter. I'm telling you, if, uh, Judas, I'll say Peter again. If Judas had repented and had not hung himself, Jesus would have forgiven him all. You go to heaven, you see Judas. <laughs> Gentility. Why? He hopes that the goodness and his gentleness will begin to walk repentance inside of us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible describes him as the lamb. Have you seen a lamb before? Lambs are meek, not goats. And that's why if you go to some churches, you see them pray. I'm a sheep and not a goat. 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 You've not seen it. They will say it a thousand times. It's in the saying that you become a sheep. It's not, <laughs> they don't know that it's just in, imbibing Christian character. Just because the sheep and the, or the lambs, they are meek. They are gentle. But the goat, the sheep gives you willing obedience. As you move, the sheep follow. The goat, you have to put a rope and be dragging it. <laughs> you know, you understand? Sheep are meek, gentle. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ was compared to the Lamb. As a matter of fact, it's called the Lamb of God that came to take away the sins of the earth. Moses, if you read Numbers chapter 12 and verse 3, the Bible described Moses as the meekest man that ever lived. Moses was a meek man. The guy was gentle. I remember, if you read the scripture, you find a, a time came when um, his cousins, Aaron and his, and his sister, uh, these two people ganged up against Moses and said, now only you God they talk to. Who, who you be, Seth? Moses didn't answer them. He left them with God. Ah, some of us will tell you, you are, me? Do you know who I am? No, I don't know who you are. <laughs> Sometimes when you ask that question, we should actually begin to find out whether your head is correct. I remember there was one story I'd seen, uh, I think it was a short video. <laughs> this lady, this guy came, he was at the front desk of um, an airline and he had missed his flight or he had missed checking. And then he began to rake, do you know who I am? The, the flight attendant was just looking at him. After he had finished ranting, she picked her mic 
and she now made an announcement that there's a young man in front of her that doesn't even know who he is. <laughs> because when you're asking, do you know who I am? It's as if <laughs> you maybe you've forgotten your identity. You're asking if someone. So she. <laughs> She, she made an announcement. There's a young man in front of me. He doesn't know who he is. Can someone please come and help? <laughs> do, you, <laughs> do you know who I am? <laughs> Moses did not defend himself. He allowed these people to do their thing. It was God that answered them. Can we be patient to allow God to answer for us? Or we like to answer for ourselves? Be gentle. Often, God will be so mad with the children of Israel. If you read the story of them in the wilderness, there were countless number of times God wanted to just press that button. You know that one now? <laughs> Lightning and thunder. Pow! Kill these people. Moses was standing between. Father, you cannot do that. You, you cannot do that, God. What would people say? That you brought them out, you couldn't take them in, so you killed them? You cannot do that, God. Out of the gentleness of his heart, Moses will intercede for people that he himself wanted to kill. <laughs> he wasn't even tempted. God said, I will finish them and I will start anew with you. Ah, that would have been a fantastic option. So that the Israelites, like we know them today, would have been, would have been maybe the Moses site or whatever they were, maybe the Moses sites. But no, he would intercede on their behalf. A gentleman. A gentleman. And if you come to the New Testament, you find the story of Stephen. Stephen was just um, one of those that were appointed to, 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 to man tables. But he went beyond the course of his, of his job. And that's why I would encourage us today to be like Stephen. Okay, you have, you have been trained to be an usher at the door. But do you know that you can go beyond just greeting people, welcome to church, to being able to counsel people when they come out for altar call? That was Stephen. He was appointed to minister at the table, but he went way and beyond that. Stephen did the job of an evangelist. Stephen did the job of a revivalist. Stephen did the job of, um, of, of, of um, he, he, he wrought miracles. Stephen did a whole lot. But guess what? When Stephen was going to be stoned, killed, executed in cold blood, he didn't retaliate. Did anybody tell you that they tied Stephen's hands where they were stoning him? They didn't tie his hand. He could have picked some stones to and throw back. <laughs> he didn't retaliate. Rather, he prayed for those who condemned him. He prayed for the forgiveness of their souls. Gentleman. Gentility. Hallelujah. We can go on and on and on and on and on and on and on, but we need to know that gentleness is a powerful Christian virtue. Very powerful Christian virtue, as we have seen in these characters. To be anything else is to not be like your God. Our God is a gentle God. Jesus, gentle. And these characters will seem gentle. What about you? Would you also imbibe some gentlemanliness? Or should we say, is there anything like gentle lady? Hallelujah. Let's drive this home a little. In today's Nigeria, today's 21st century, how can I demonstrate gentleness? Are you ready? I'll, bring, I'll, I'll mention a few. How can I demonstrate gentleness? Today, as a 21st century Christian, how can I demonstrate gentleness? Permit me to shut my Bible. This fan is really harassing me. Number one. Be considerate to others. Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. If you will help me. Philippians 2, 3 and 4. Okay. Okay, why are they looking, at, looking for it? Philippians chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. Be considerate of others. Consider how people feel. Consider how people feel. Oh, you know that that person, ah! You have just come back home from work. The help has been killing herself or himself to impress you, Oga. To impress you, Madam. They have washed the car. They have mopped the floor. Washed your clothes. 
clean the kitchen, did everything. The house is speak and span. You came back, they rushed to come and greet you at the door to carry your bag inside. And the moment you stepped inside the house, the first thing you saw was the, the, the mop bucket that he, he forgot by the dining and you begin to give it to him or give it to her. And you can see that his expression has changed. But you don't care. To hell with how he feels. After all, you are paying them. Be gentle. Consider people's feelings. Consider people's needs. Consider the situation that they are going through. We need to be considerate. Have consideration for others. Do, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourself. Be considerate. Think of other people. How they feel should matter to you. Be considerate. Number two, show empathy. That same scripture will suffice. To show empathy simply means you should be willing to put yourself in other people's shoes. If I were them, how would I feel? If I were them, how would I want to be talked to? Never say anything to anybody that you would not want anyone to say to you. Okay? So show empathy. Put yourself in people's shoes. Be patient with others. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 2. Oh, that one, eh? That is where people like us are still struggling. If I was to score myself in the area of patience on a scale of 1 to 10, maybe a 3, maybe even a two and a half. But God is helping us. And I became that three because I worked with children. If you work with children, you will learn patience. <laughs> I'm telling you, I mean, if you want to be, to be taught or to, to receive that virtue called patience, just go and do one month in the children's church. You will learn patience overnight. Because you, all through, you'll be shouting back in orders. Stop that, put that down, come here, don't go there, come in that, 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 that. As if you're telling him, you catch him, you catch him and put him down. He sits down for two seconds. Once you, pew, he's gone again. You will learn patience. By force. Be patient with others. Be patient. Be patient. You just got that new house help. And one day you came back from work and you saw that that bucket that you use in um, filtering your kunu is one they're using to mop the floor. Be patient. Be patient. They didn't know. Did you write Kunu on the bucket? No. If they knew, be patient. It will take a while, but they will adjust. It will take a while. It will take one or two <laughs> funny things like that happening. But they would adjust. They would adjust. He will use the mop for the toilet to mop the sitting room. They will learn. You, you are the one that knows that the blue mop is for the parlor and the red one is for the toilet. They don't know. They just came. Be patient. Be patient. Be patient even with your children. <laughs> you see why I said that me, I'm a, I'm a 3 or maybe 2.5. Be patient with your children. You just want everybody to be prime and proper. <laughs> they are not robots. They are humans. Allow them. Be patient. It will take time but they will get there. We have to learn to be patient with others. Hallelujah. Number four, remember the golden rule. The golden rule can be found in Luke chapter 6 and verse 31. Do unto others as you wish others to. What you will not want anybody to say to you, try not to say to somebody else. Try. You will discover that you won't die. Put a guard to your mouth. Try. What you will not want anybody to do to you, try not to do it to somebody else. Try. And we know, by the time you have said that thing, you know you have hurt the person, but who cares? Let them suck it up. No. Remember the golden rule. That is how we can show our gentleness in today's um, Nigeria. 
Remember the golden rule. If you will not cut in front of somebody when you are driving, or if you don't want someone to cut in front of you when you are driving, don't do it to somebody else. Don't do it to somebody else. If you don't want someone to shunt in your front at a queue, don't do it to somebody else. The way you would want to be treated, remember to do what? Treat others in the same way. Hallelujah. Number five, speak respectfully to everyone. Colossians chapter 4 and verse 6. I will just read out the scriptures because media is um, having some little challenge today. Colossians 4, 6 and Proverbs 15, 1. Proverbs 15, 1 says that, uh, that a gentle answer turns away rat. The man is angry. Maybe you saw I was just angry and sparking for that road safety man or VIO guy and he just gave me a simple answer. And all my anger what? <laughs> a gentle answer will turn away rat. It will turn away the anger. When someone comes, like I was listening to someone yesterday, you know what he said? He said that often we mirror the, the emotions of the people we are talking to. By the time someone comes to you and they come with, with a lot of anger, you just see that you reflect it too. Before you realize it, you just mirror it. If they come and they're saying, and they're talking to you kindly, or they come with a smile, you just mirror it. You too, you smile back. You don't even know how. It, 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 it's a natural stimulus. Do we understand that? A gentle answer. So this man has come with his fight and trouble. He doesn't even have all his facts correct, but he has come to make trouble. And you look at him after he has finished, you know? So they come with a lot of trouble. Don't give it, no. You respond as a gentle person. And you will see all of that anger diffused. Hallelujah. So speak respectfully to everyone. You pay them. You don't pay them. They owe you. They don't owe you. Or you owe them. Speak respectfully to everybody. Don't ever look down on any man. Again, I will say to you, remember the story of Naaman. Remember. Speak respectfully to everyone. Number six, seek peace with everyone. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14. Be a peaceful person. A gentle person is peaceful. They don't want trouble. Though. If this um, face towel will cause us to quarrel, take. Just be at peace. Be at peace with everyone. I remember one time many years ago, I had done a job. And um, I had borrowed a friend's company to execute that project. <laughs> but we didn't spell out things. I just took his company profiles that were sitting sli sli in the drawer. He gave me three. The three of them got jobs. And at the end of the job, the jobs were not even mine. I was fronting for a friend. And the man said, okay, this person that gave you the profiles, give him one million error for each company. I'm talking about 15, 12 years ago. A million error was big money. So he was getting three million error for just three pro for just using his profile to do the job. The guy said, we're not collecting. Ah, three million. And I said, ah, why? He said, no, I like, can't take three million, blah, blah. He didn't invest a dime, just profiles. And I said, okay, what do you want? He said, how much am I getting? <laughs> I was shocked. My friend. And I told him, I didn't lie. I said, the guy gave me nine million. He's my friend, of course. The man was trying to help me. He gave me nine million. He said, and that will add the three to the nine, making what? Twelve. Now, because the jobs came from me, we'll remove the two on top, and the remaining ten will split it down the middle. Would that make you happy? He said, yes. You are sure? Because by this time, the money was going to be paid to his account. So he had, he had me now. He had me. Would that make you happy? He said, yes. Take the five. Send the rest. And he took it. Rather allow yourself to be defrauded. Is that what the scripture says? Take the five, send the rest. And he was happy. Guess what? Today we are still friends. Not in spoil. Today we are still friends. <laughs> but that is how people are. Seek peace. This life is not worth it all. You will be sure people die for, for, for nothing. You are, what are you dragging? Let them have it. Have I died? I'm still here. And a lot more money have come after that time. 
Seek peace with all men. Don't drag anything with anybody. If they want it, even if it's in your office, somebody's dragging something with you, they want the blue chair, they don't want the red chair, give them the blue chair. Let them have it. Whatever it is, don't drag anything with anybody. Seek peace with all men. Number seven, how do we demonstrate gentleness in today's Nigeria? Be of a calming personality. First Peter 3, 3 and 4. First Peter chapter 3, verses 3 and 4. Be of a, let, just be calm. Even if you, if, you, if you walk into a place and you see two people fighting, don't, throw, don't add petrol to the fire. Be that one that once you step into that place, all the tension will disappear. First Peter chapter... Hallelujah. Okay, this is ES. No wonder. ESV. What's that? Okay, so be of a calming personality. If the trouble comes to you, be calm. If you come to a place where there is trouble, bring calmness. Do you understand? Don't always be, don't be that person that when you go and meet two people quarreling, you add petrol to fire. <laughs> don't be that. Be a gentle person. A gentle person would diffuse the tension. Calm A, calm B. Uh, how some man say, you, you, you give them hankuri. Zach, 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 Basu hankuri. Calm this one down, calm that one down. Let, you're laughing at my house, sir. Can you speak Edo? <laughs> See this woman, be careful. I'm trying to be a gentleman. Who. <laughs> and that's not gentle. When you tell people you are, you are trying to be gentle, then you know you're not. Hallelujah. Well, just kidding. Okay? Be a calming personality. When you come into a place, calm nerves. Calm nerves. Don't be the one that says, hmm, oh, wow. This, you see, uh, brother, our KK is already boiling about what someone did. Then you now come and tell him, ah, ah, that person said, why would he do that? Ah, no, 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 no. If it's me, I will not take it. What? <laughs> no. Just tell him, Kai, my brother, just forgive him. But you know this person now. That is how they always behave. No, 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 no. Don't take it personal. It's not only you. Do you know what they've done to me? Yeah, that is how they are. But what do we do? Shebi is our brother. We have to help him. Just calm that situation down. Don't add petrol. Be of a calming personality. Number eight, act with tenderness and love. Act with tenderness and love. Act with tenderness and love. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 32. Always respond in love. Considering your own self, you never know. You remember the story of the man who was owing his boss a lot of money in the Bible? And the boss did what forgave him. He went, he just went and grabbed that other one by the neck and was shaking him. You must pay me my money today. And when the boss heard what happened, the boss was mad. He said, if I treated you this way, shouldn't you have done the same to that other person? Shouldn't you always act with tenderness and love? Because you never know. You never know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number 10, listen more than you speak. James, number what? Number 9. Oh, yeah, number 9. Listen. You guys are following. Thank you. Listen more than you speak. James chapter 1 and verse 19. Pastor Ina used to say to us that do you know that there's a reason why God gave you two ears and one mouth? <laughs> he would have given you two mouths to, just to match the number of ears. You have one ear, one at the back of your head. <laughs> why did he give you two ears and one mouth? Maybe, just maybe, I'm not saying that I, I, I don't assume to speak for God, but maybe, just maybe he wants you to listen twice as much as you speak. Think about that. Maybe. He wants you to listen twice as much as you speak. A lot of us, eh, we don't want to hear anybody. We just want to talk. And when you find those kind of people as care group leader, eh, some people are pointing fingers. <laughs> uh, tell her to listen for herself. <laughs> if you have those kind of people as care group leader, they will stand in front. They will read the outline. They will read the scripture. They will answer all the questions. They will share grace and ask you to go. By the time you leave that kind of care group, your mouth is smelling. Check your breath. Oof. Why? 
You didn't talk for the two hours you were there. The care group that did all the talking for you. It's not good. God has given us two ears and one mouth because he wants us to listen twice as much as we speak. Don't be in a hurry to air your opinion. Let others talk. You will learn something from that, oh. I'm telling you. You just come into the place. You have not even heard the, the problem. You are giving solution. After you are finished giving the solution, they listen to you. After you are finished, they now tell you the real problem. You now feel stupid. <laughs> Listen more than you speak. Gentle people are never rush. They never rush into anything. They are not in a hurry to give counsel. They will listen and get all the details and facts. Listen more than you speak. Hallelujah. Number 10, be humble. Philippians 2, verses 5 to 8. The Bible says that Jesus, the one that we all claim is our Father, the one that we all love to emulate, the Bible says that he didn't consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. He took off the high clothes and the, the, came down from his high horse. And he made himself of no reputation. He was willing to come as a mere man and to die a shameful death of the cross. And like I said one time, imagine when, when heaven was asking who would go for us. Jesus, we just thought today. He will start pretending like he's cutting his nails. <laughs> and say, now let me submit that you, the Holy Spirit, you know will go die. No, he didn't do that. He didn't do that. So be humble. Hallelujah. And number 11, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32 again. Be forgiven. Be forgiven. We should learn to forgive people. We should learn always to forgive people. I'll read what someone once wrote. It's a very powerful sentence. When someone offends you, guess what? That puts them below you. Offenses will definitely come. But the one from whom, through, through whom the offenses come is already automatically below you. But when you get even with them, you become even. You're now at the same level. But guess what? If you, if, if, you, if you respond in gentleness and you are more forgiving, you automatically become above. Do you understand? The one who offends automatically becomes under. And when you get even with them, you become even, you are at par. But if you respond with gentleness, automatically you go above. Pastor Ina always said one thing, that whenever you descend on somebody, you go lower. Is that not the meaning of descend? <laughs> to descend, like you do, to descend a building means you are going down. The any time you descend on somebody, you go lower. You go lower. Be forgiving. Last week we talked about um, kindness. One of the is forgiving. Be forgiving. Often when you forgive people, guess what? You qualify also for forgiveness. That's the truth. And like Pastor Ida taught us many years ago, and a lot of us have been practicing it, it helps us a whole lot. We take care of you in our devotion. We forgive you in advance because we know that you will hurt us. We know that you will offend us. So we pray in advance. Father, I forgive anybody and everybody today in advance. So when the hurt comes, I look at you. Instead of getting angry, I smile and I let it go and I forgive you. Why? I have taken care of you at the place of devotion. Hallelujah. Be forgiven. Amen. Those are 11 different ways we can demonstrate gentleness today. Okay? Be considerate, show empathy, be patient, remember the golden rule, speak respectfully to everyone, seek peace with everyone, be of a calming personality, act with tenderness and love, listen more than you speak, be humble and be forgiven. Question now. Are there benefits to being gentle? Or would someone, would everybody just be riding roughshod over you? And when we're preparing this message, the pastor of Lagos say, Hey, God, help me to preach this message. <laughs> Imagine teaching people in Lagos to be gentle. <laughs> you don't kill the man now. How can you be gentle in a place like Lagos? How do you preach gentleness, gent gentleness in Lagos? But of course, God will help him. It doesn't matter where you are. 
The word of God shouldn't be broken. We never should come a time when we use the circumstance or the situation in which we are in to interpret the word. It should always be the other way around. Hallelujah. So even if you are in Lagos, be gentle. You are in Port Harcourt, be gentle. Oh, you are in Benin. <laughs> that is the den of madness. Be gentle. You can learn it, you can practice it anywhere in the world because there are benefits to being gentle. Benefit number one, promotion, elevation, exaltation. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10 says that after Jesus had agreed and he had come and died that shameful death on the cross, therefore, therefore, our God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name, that at the mention of the name, every knee. Can you imagine that power? And that is the name we are using till date. Why? Because he was gentle. He accepted that the, 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 the reason for which he had come. And God responded in kind. Promotion is coming. Elevation is coming. Exaltation comes from being gentle. Hallelujah. Another benefit is sus it, it sustains relationship. Can you imagine with me? Do you, how many of us know the role Peter played? Um, in leading the early church. Peter played a very prominent role. Oh. I'm telling you. And do you know why? Jesus was gentle with him. Imagine if every time Peter did all those his um, barazana or wuruburu and Jesus Christ brought out Koboko and flogged him. By the time Jesus Christ had ascended there, eh, Peter would have just gone back. He would have bought a, bought a bigger boat and did bigger fishing. He would have forgotten about Jesus and all his, his uh, coming to save the world. But because of the gentleness of Jesus towards Peter, even when Peter backslid, he still restored him again with the spirit of gentleness. It was easy to sustain that relationship and Peter ultimately became the, one of the strongest pillars in our church. And that's why tomorrow the Catholics will tell you that Peter was the first pope. They are also laying claims to him. Let me drive this home. A lot of us didn't, didn't meet Pastor Ina and Pastor, uh, Pastor Ina, uh, but those of us that met him will tell you Pastor Ina was one of the most gentle men that ever lived. And he was even 10 times more that at home. The man was very gentle with Pastor Sarah. Pastor Sarah herself will tell you that there was the first day she preached, she preached for two hours. <laughs> she preached for two hours. You're supposed to preach for 40 minutes or 35. She preached for two hours. And she was so sure she would never smell that microphone again. The very next Sunday, Pastor put the mark back in her hand and told her, Matana, you can do it. Only this time, cut his phone. <laughs> and he was so gentle to her. Pastor would do some things and she would, even, to, even for herself, she would be afraid to go back home. She would think that Pastor Ina was going to eat her up at home that day. When they go home, Pastor doesn't talk about it. Out of the gentleness in the way Pastor treated her, can you see when Pastor passed, she was able to take the mic and continue the baton and continue from where Pastor stopped. Do you understand that? Imagine if Pastor was the kind that was very, very harsh towards her. This woman. <laughs> I'm telling you, the day Pastor would, the day, the day Pastor transited, Pastor would just pack her things and go back to America. She will say this in Anofi Duamo. Do you understand? But because someone treated her with a lot of gentleness, she was willing to carry on the legacy and run with the baton after him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it sustains relationship. It sustains relationship. Number three, uh, benefit of, of, um, of being gentle. It strengthens and empowers the character of the leader. If you have people under you, either a boss in the office or a layman leadership in church, it, it, it strengthens and empowers the character of a leader. Everybody wants a gentle leader. Nobody wants the one that will talk to them as if he fits them. You can't do that to me. I won't take it. I won't, you won't talk to me as if you feed me because I'm under you in church. If I won't take it, why should I do it? Have I ever spoken to anybody in that manner? There is a place for anger in leadership, yes. But I don't, I don't have 
the permission of, 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 of the senior pastor to come and talk to you as if, as if you, are, you are under my feet. I don't. I don't. Okay, so it strengthens and empowers the character of a leader. He, uh, he, now the leader, um, he, he learns to accommodate the people more. He, he grows in maturity. He grows in, in humility. And he becomes more tolerant. And therefore, he becomes a better leader. Gentleness will make you a better leader. Definitely. No doubt about that. Hallelujah. Number four, after talking about the leader, it moves the heart of those who follow him. If you are a gentle leader, oh, you move the heart of the people. You move the heart of the people. Was that not what the, the counsel that, that the elders gave to Rehoboam, that's the Solomon's son that took over from the throne? He says, if you will be nice to these people, if you speak kind words to them, they will serve you all the days of their life. It moves the heart of those who follow you if you deal with them kindly and they, they, it builds their loyalty it, it, they become more dedicated and more willing to serve hallelujah gentleness is persuasive and gentleness is attractive the people would do anything if they know that their leader is a gentle person they will be willing to follow him anywhere those are benefits so if you're a leader here you lead any group you lead the worship team. You lead the, the, the ministry of helps. You lead media. You lead the intercessors. You lead the children, the children's church workers. You lead the youth church workers. Any part of leadership you find yourself, if you will be gentle to those under you, they will be willing to go all the miles, all the nine miles with you, the whole nine yards. Hallelujah. 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 But if you are not, they will drop you like hot potatoes. Number five, gentleness will lead to salvation. Isn't that what the scripture says? That the gentleness of God, the goodness of God, the loving kindness of God works repentance in us. If you are gentle to people, people who are undeserving, eventually one day they will want to know your God. They will want to just follow you to that church. We can't person be this. They don't do everything to make you angry and you are still calm. They will follow you to your church. It would eventually lead to their salvation. Eventually. There are so many people who have never ever heard about Jesus. They have never maybe had the time to read the Bible. But as they see your own gentility, Kai, they want to be like this person. And you will know whenever they run into trouble, the first person they come to is you. You know that they want to be like you. Hallelujah. And number six, it's one of the ways to be salt and light to the earth. You diffuse the fragrance of Christ. A gentleman diffuses the fragrance of Christ. Gentleness on its own is evangelism. Because we have to be, remember you have to be the message first before you preach the message. Is that not true? You have to first be the message before you preach the message. Imagine with me. You have fought with Teresa. You have fought with John. You broke uh, Angela's head. And then you want to preach to, to me? Yeah? Can you imagine? When you, when you as you step forward to preach to me, I'm stepping back. I'm running away from you. I don't want to be like you. You have to remember that you have first the message before you go anywhere to preach the message. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16. Media, if you help me, we need to see this. Matthew 5, 16. We read Matthew 5, 5. Matthew 5, 16 now. Hallelujah. In the same way, let your light shine. Me, yeah, I'm going to put so shine. Let your light so shine before others so that they may see your good work. Verse 17. Or continue, I'm sorry your good works and give glory to your father who is in heaven let your light so shine let your light so shine permit me to, to re-echo it again and again let your light so shine let your light shine everywhere you go shine the light no man lights a lamp and puts it or hides it under the bed. That's what the scripture says. He puts it on a lampstand so that it can give its light. Let your light so shine. Because every time you do that, guess what? You are advertising Christ. 
People will look at you and begin to say, Kai, God has done a great work in this man's life. They give glory to God. Let your light so shine so that everyone who begins to see your good work, who begins to benefit from your gentleness, will give glory to God. Because the more like Christ will become, the more our lives impact others. The more our lives draw others to Jesus. The more like Christ you are, the more your life draws men to Jesus. Do you know that the Bible says that if I be lifted up, this was Christ speaking, if I be lifted up, what will happen? I will draw men unto myself. What happens if you lift him up? If you lift him up in your character, if you lift him up in your goodness, if you lift him up in your gentleness, you would invariably draw men to him. As we conclude this morning, I need for you to know that we are living in a world that is very harsh and brash. Every day you go out, they knock you left, right, and center. A little gentleness would help. It will go a long way, a very long way. Be gentle. Be that person that just adds a little bit, a little bit of color to other people's lives. Their lives, of course, is harsh. Everywhere they go, things are not working. But whenever they bump into you, something about you just makes the thing a little bit different. Hallelujah. Be gentle. Be gentle to your spouse. Be gentle to your children. Your family should be the first recipient of your gentle nature. Be gentle to your colleagues. Be gentle to your neighbors. Be gentle to your staff. Those ones that do, because they are at your mercy, you pay them, so you don't think you should be gentle to them. Be gentle even to your staff. Because some of them might know something that might hurt your organization and bring you to your knees, but they will never tell you. Why? They want to show you, now you the show say be boss. Oh, yeah. And when the thing, when the job crumbles and everybody, they will go and work with your competition. <laughs> be gentle. Be gentle. As you drive, be gentle on the road. You are not the only one using the road. I'm talking to myself now. Be gentle to other road users as well. Be gentle on the queue. If you will not shut, uh, shunt, if, if you don't want anyone to shunt in front of you, don't shunt in front of them. Be gentle in your arguments. Hey, some people can argue for Africa. They will argue, to the, they just want to win. No. Okay, so you have won the argument, but you have lost a friend. What benefit is that to you? Even in your argument, you may be right, but be gentle. Be gentle. That person may be talking trash. Be gentle still. Be gentle even in argument. Be gentle in all that we do. It's not a sign of weakness. It's not a sign of passivity. It's actually a sign of great strength under control. Let's bow our heads. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.